discuss about you know Palo Alto appliances. What are the hardware available? We also talk about uh, central management device, which is Panorama, and we also discuss about subscription, which is license, and we also talk about flow logic. Today we are going to talk about physical interface of the Palo Alto firewall. So in Palo Alto firewall, we have different role of the interface. Okay, and um, this is up to us we can change the their role at any time okay so we are going to talk about that that role basically so meanwhile let me just power on the lab as well so that i can show you um, okay so the physical interface of palo alto firewall you can see over here we have different type of interface in palo alto firewall okay so we have management and then we have you know data plane so these are the data plane interface and in in this uh, scenario we are going to talk about all these data plane interfaces these data plane interfaces you can define different role if required so you can configure as a tap to these interface or you can configure as a layer 2 layer 3 or you can configure as a HA or you can configure as a V wire. So total view, we have a five type of physical interface. Okay. In, in Palo Alto firewall. So let's, let's discuss them. What is the use of these five type of interfaces? So, um, one is the tap mode interface. Okay. What is this interface? this interface working as a span port or mirror port so sometimes we require to dump the you know traffic which is passing through the firewall see so in that case you can configure the interface this interface as a tap mode so we can take a scenario over here let's say you have a Palo Alto firewall this is Palo Alto firewall and uh, we know that whatever the traffic passing through the firewall if due to any regulatory reason we have to catch that all traffic then one of the interface we have to configure as a tap mode so let's say uh, this is follow to firewall people are browsing the internet through the follow to firewall but there is a requirement regulatory requirement that whatever the traffic passing through the firewall we need to capture entire traffic so on that case is what we can do we can put any capture device over here maybe server server we can put on the server we can install any packet capturing software maybe we can install wireshark and then connect it to follow to firewall this interface maybe is zero slash zero we can configure as a tap mode we can configure tap mode to this interface now what would happen whatever traffic passing through the firewall a copy of a packet would go over here and this server where you are running Wireshark, this would be able to capture entire traffic. Okay. So why we need to do that? We need to do these things, maybe regulatory requirement. Requirement. Or we just want to do traffic engineering. engineering if you want to do this regulatory requirement or traffic engineering and want to capture entire packet yes you can do that this is similar to a span port in switch okay so that is the use of tap mode we will see practically as well later 
But for now, just understand that what is the use of tap mode. Using tap mode, you can do the packet capture. All the traffic which is passing through the firewall that can be captured through tap mode interface. The next type of interface we have virtual wire. So what, what virtual wire does basically, whatever traffic is coming to one interface, the same traffic it is going to pass to another interface, okay, with firewall inspection, right? So I, I can give you some scenario like this. Let's understand. So let's say we have a router over here. which is connected to internet and you have a switch uh, right here where user are connected. Now user browsing the internet via router, what would be the default gateway for these user? Your router IP. So let's say this interface of router is Ethernet 0 slash 0, having the IP 192.168.2.1. And this is the network for which you have configured IP 192.168.2.0 slash 24. Maybe for this, you have configured 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, and default gateway of this, this PC is this PC is the router IP, which is 192.168.2.1. That is the default gateway. Now, in VWire, what happened basically, uh, right now you don't have any firewall, right? But let's say your, com your company thought to put the firewall over here, but they don't want to change any kind of routing infrastructure. That means if you are placing a firewall over here, earlier there is no security, people can browse open internet from here, but now you just want to put a firewall so that there should be some security where you can regulate the traffic, what traffic you just want to allow or what traffic you just don't want to allow. So you decided to put the firewall, okay? Now the condition is the routing, after putting the firewall, routing should not change, but firewall should do its task. So on that case, a firewall you need to deploy in the vWire mode. So when you deploy a firewall in a vWire mode, it is layer two, right? It is, it is kind of layer two, we can say, but it's a little different than layer two because it's not learning any MAC address. So when you deploy a firewall in a vWire mode, it is working as a transparent. So in Cisco ASA, we have concept of transparent firewall where firewall is doing its task, but for the user, end user, it is kind of transparent and user would be is still having the default gateway of router. Okay. So it is doing an inspection. Okay. So this interface may be ethernet zero slash one and ethernet zero slash zero. These two interface of the firewall, you would be putting into vWire mode. So whatever traffic comes over here, it would go out. Okay. And uh, without any, any kind of routing, it would go out and firewall is, is still doing all the inspection. So whatever rule you have written on the firewall, those rule is going to be evaluated. Okay. While firewall is tra passing the traffic. So let's say you have written like these users should not be able to access any kind of hacking website. Hacking website you have blocked. Okay. So any hacking website, if this user is trying to access or maybe any social networking website, you have 
defined that any social networking website should be blocked. So if these user is trying to browse any social networking device, uh, website, the firewall would be able to inspect that. Okay. But for the end user, this would be transparent. Okay. For end user, end user is still would be thinking that their next hope is what this router. Okay. But uh, a firewall which you have deployed in a transparent mode, it's doing its job. It could be filtering the traffic. But for end user, this would be completely transparent, you can say. So when you don't want to make any changes in your routing infrastructure, okay, but you want to decide that firewall should be in the infrastructure, so you can deploy firewall in the vWire mode. Okay, so whatever the traffic is coming to one interface, the the firewall is transferring that that traffic to another interface with the evaluation of the firewall rule right so this is one of the scenario where you can use in real life we also use that right i mean when we don't want to make any changes on routing infrastructure but still we just want to deploy a firewall so yes we can do that we can deploy a firewall in a vWire mode. But problem is when you deploy a firewall in a vWire mode, okay, since this is just a kind of layer two deployment, okay, so on that cases, you are going to lose some functionality, especially whatever the service which is working on a layer three, like VPN, which required I, uh, you know, IP address, VPN functionality you are going to lose over here when you deploy a firewall into the vWire mode. Okay. Moving to next, there is a layer two. The next deployment is a layer two. Okay. vWire mode we have understand. And when you just want to deploy vWire mode, you can use any combination of the interfaces. That means if let's say ethernet zero slash zero is a you know copper interface okay so you can use another side copper as well you can use fiber fiber combination or you can use copper fiber combination in one v wire okay if you are creating a v wire in one v wire you would have a two interface that means one pair only two interface you can put in the one v wire okay when you're deploying a firewall in a v wire mode it is not learning any v mac address or it is not learning any ip address on interfaces okay the firewall would still be able to block the traffic in with the stateful manner in the v wire mode Right, so that is the use of vWire mode. Let's go to uh, go and understand layer two. So layer two, when you want to deploy a firewall in a layer two, sometimes you need to you, you know inter route your uh, VLAN traffic, okay? But you don't have a router, so you, on that time you can use a firewall. A firewall can do both the things. It can inter route your traffic and it can understand the VLAN as well. So you, you need to create a, um, you know, layer two interface, layer two type of interface. So let's understand with one of scenario over here. Let's say you have a switch right here. These two PC is connected to VLAN 10. This is VLAN 10. And uh, this is VLAN 20. Twenty. Let's say. Now, if you need to transfer the traffic from VLAN 10 to VLAN 20, what you required? You required a router, basically so that it can do the VLAN routing or this switch having the capability as a layer three capability. It should have, have the layer three capability. So let's say you don't have this kind of things. 
but you just want to achieve this through firewall okay so Palo Alto firewall you can use a Palo Alto firewall this is Palo Alto firewall on Palo Alto firewall this interface you can configure as a layer 2 okay so that it can understand the traffic and it can also route the traffic from one VLAN to another VLAN by creating a within the layer 2 you can create SVI switch virtual interface okay and this firewall would be able to route the VLAN traffic as well so you can say that when you just want to have the VLAN uh, communication so on that case Palo Alto firewall can work as a layer 2 and it can route one VLAN traffic to another VLAN uh, uh, into another VLAN but in every case the inspection is there right yeah inspection would be there inspection and, would, would and in there. case of vware it is acting as a hub no man yes, yes. we can say that it is acting as a hub and it is doing all its how, inspection how the how the stateful inspection can be done then a stateful inspection because it is still maintaining that that table it is still able to learn source ip destination ip but it is not going to store anywhere that uh, i mean it is not going to maintain any table. cam table yeah mm. but still it is able to uh, you know um, understand source ip uh, even the IP, ip even the ip ID yes okay. yes destination ip source port number destination port number and app id so whether you are deploying firewall is on layer 2 or layer 3 uh, sorry layer 2 or vwire your firewall basic understanding uh, would be there okay it would be able to understand source ip destination ip source port number destination port number and app id so session table session table would be there always okay so on layer two cases yeah. we can say sure. that yeah. sure. thank you on layer two cases we can say that we can configure multiple interface into this and it firewall can act as a virtual C. it can route the vlan traffic on the layer two mode now i'm going on a layer three mode one one more feature we are going to lose over here i mean in Palo Alto firewall, we don't have concept of STP protocol. Okay. So whether you are deploying firewall in layer two mode, but firewall is not going to run any kind of STP instances. Now I'm going on the fourth one, which is layer three. And this is a mostly used in the organization. Okay. This is mostly used. I mean, uh, around 80 to 90 percent you are going to configure this type of interface on the firewall so what is the layer 3 mode on layer 3 mode on interface we required ip address okay and all layer 3 operation would be done by the firewall okay that means routing of the traffic routing would be done by the firewall as well so let's understand this way i would take simple example the same example which we have taken for the v wire let's say these are the user who is browsing the internet so let's say there is a company started with three user okay and their initial requirement was to have the internet access so that they can their um, user can do their job okay but let's say company is growing and now you just want to put firewall okay so you can put firewall over here this is a firewall okay so you purchase the palo alto firewall you put in into the network as soon as you put the firewall okay and decide to put on which mode you have decided to put on layer 3 mode now what was default gateway of this user earlier it was default gateway of router 
as you decide layer 3 mode so what would happen the user can't go directly to the router okay they have their default gateway is going to change and it would be the firewall ip whatever the in uh, this zone interface so ip would be firewall ip over here okay so now these user would send the traffic to this interface to the firewall then firewall is further is going to evaluate all the firewall rule if everything is okay or allowed then firewall is going to route that traffic towards the the next hope whatever the next hope we will configure on the firewall it is going to route that traffic so fire when when you are configuring route uh, i mean layer 3 the firewall would enable the routing functionality as well a firewall can forward the traffic to the available next hope clear that is the use of layer 3 mode and mostly we are going to configure this one okay layer 3 then finally we have ha interface okay which is high availability so let's understand a little about high availability what is the high availability so basically in the organization whenever we just want to configure our firewall so we want to decide that there should be redundancy that means let's take example of this let's say this is my firewall which i have deployed and there are a user which is connected through this which is connected to, through this firewall and trying to browse internet let's say they are browsing internet let's consider so what would happen if this firewall goes down then there is a so single point of failure right the entire traffic is going to be stopped so what we decide that we decide uh, another firewall with the same configuration to pin to put into the network so now you have two firewall firewall one and firewall two and these are working in a redundant mode okay so if any of the firewall this firewall is getting failed the other firewall should take care of the traffic okay so now user traffic would be going via this firewall but problem is uh, if you configure in this way i mean this is redundancy this is the redundancy that means uh, if user was trying to browse traffic via you know let me just change the color let's say user was trying to browse the traffic uh, intern internet via firewall one earlier and they had created the session let's say session with the any kind of backing okay website they were trying to access so session was created with this firewall now what happened this firewall goes down okay now what should be the session should also you know maintain by firewall too right else you know if this firewall goes down people's session is going to lose and they have to recreate a new session with firewall too so let's say maybe this user was doing doing any zoom call so the calling was going via firewall one okay now when this firewall goes down their call call would shift on firewall two but not existing call the new call has to initiate by this user okay so on that case what we can do we can do a stateful failover when we say a stateful failover that means we just want that entire session should shift from firewall one to firewall two in case of firewall failure okay so for that what we required we required some sync between firewall one and firewall two so for syncing itself the session syncing we required what ha port high availability port okay so we have ha1 ha2 and we have ha3 type of interfaces ha3 ha2 ha3 so what we required we required 
uh, interface that can sync the session okay so for that what we required we required high availability port ha port so some of the port we need to configure if the ha port is not present as you know that in, on high end model high end model yesterday we talked about that on high end model we have dedicated ha port ha port when we say dedicated ha port that means we have the hardware on the hardware there would be written that this is a ha1 and this is ha2 okay but let's say you are not using high end model where you are not getting any ha port okay maybe you you are using virtual firewall when we say virtual firewall that means you have purchased vm machine vm 300 or vm 500 on that firewall we don't have ha port right so what we need to do whatever the existing port of label these are the existing port of label maybe this is ethernet 0 slash 0 ethernet 0 slash 1 ethernet 0 slash 2 ethernet 0 slash 3 these are what these are the normal interface and this normal interface users want to convert into ha so you have to configure the any of let's say you required three interface ha1 ha2 ha3 so these interfaces ha2 uh, sorry ethernet 0 slash 2 ethernet 0 slash 1 and 0 slash 3 these interface you are going to configure as what you are going to configure as a ha port so this interface you can configure as a ha this one also you can configure as a ha and this one also you can configure as a ha high availability and once right. this configure so as a ha only only one interface you will use as the user traffic and the management i mean you one interface we can use or multiple interface we can use right now i have taken example of four interface but on the actual firewall you have more than that you may no, no. Have... in case of vm let us say uh, vm mm -hmm. we have mm -hmm. so how the ha thing will be uh, get configured and why we are requiring so many so many uh, ha interfaces basically uh, there is a control link data link and um, forwarding as well so ha3 required if we have if you want to achieve active active failover on the firewall then this is required but on the active standby in cases we just require two control link and uh, data link control link is basically is for the heartbeat etc and data link is for the arp table sync okay because firewall is going to maintain its arp table as well and session table as well so that is used for the ha2 and if we have active active what is the third one the third one is a forwarding one so any kind of asymmetric packet would be maintained by this Second third one maybe we can say yeah okay yeah so i mean on firewall usually if you have virtual machine or you have physical firewall as well if you don't have any dedicated ha interface let's say on that cases existing interface you can convert into the ha mode and you can achieve the ha functionality okay so dedicated interface is providing the ha functionality using which you can sync the like this is this is for the heartbeat ha1 okay where it is going to send that whether the connected firewall is alive or not it is going to detect that this is for the data link data link is basically it is where, where the, your session table is being synced all the session table is being synced by this particular interface ha2 but you don't have a dedicated interface let's say so on that cases whatever the existing interface you have okay you can convert them them into ha okay and you can achieve the same functionality which you were achieving using a dedicated interface So during the HA configuration, I would show you that how you can convert the existing port into HA mode and you can achieve the HA functionality. Okay. So high availability port job is this one. Now I'm going to talk about that. What all the functionality we can achieve in a particular mode. So for example, oh, sorry. 
here we can go if you are using a v wire or layer 2 vpn kind of things you can't use okay because it is not supporting any layer 3 and for vpn you must require a layer 3 um, ip so on v wire or layer 2 you are not going to have vpn functionality so vpn functionality you can achieve on layer 3 okay but netting is still you can do multicast is still you can do firewall basically allow the multicast traffic so any kind of multitask uh, multicast traffic for example routing updates you can send through firewall okay because routing updates usually sent on the multicast address so yes firewall allow that okay from pan um, pan operating system 7.0 onwards it is supporting multicast operating system multicast traffic now we which will talk version, which version is currently going on 10 10 around 10.0 something it's okay. latest one okay logical interface so we talk about physical interface earlier and now we will decide to go to the logical interface so what is the logical interface that means that is not present in the firewall okay but yes th that is present in the firewall but you you can't touch them right that's that's the use of logical interface so we can say that sub interface is a example of logical interface aggregate interface is an example of logical interface tunnel in interface is an example of logical interface and loop back interface is an example of logical interface so we have four type of interface which can consider as a logical interface sub interfaces which is ieee standard 802.1q and we have aggregate interface which is 803.802.3 ad and uh, tunnel interface which is basically used for the ipsec and ssl vpn okay and finally loopback interface so these are the example of logical interface so let's understand what is a sub interface and where we should use this so i would take a simple example over here so i'm writing here logical interface And the first interface we are talking about sub interface let's say you have a physical firewall this is your fi physical firewall you have just four interface apart from management over here now what you just want to decide with this firewall you just want to deploy this firewall in this way um, there should be a switch this is your firewall further this is connecting to the internet Okay. And uh, you, you just have four interface over here. Two interface you are going to use for the HA. This interface you are going to use as a HA1 and this interface you are going to use as a HA2. How many interface remains? Two interface remains. Okay. So maybe this is Ethernet 0 slash 0 and this is Ethernet zero slash one now ethernet zero slash one you have connected to the interface uh, internet and ethernet zero slash zero you have connected to the internal network but you need to connect more network more network means you have one more network over here which is connected to the firewall 
which may be DMG. This is a DMG segment. Okay. But number of interface, you have just four. Two interface you have used for HA and just two interface, one interface you have used for this side, maybe for internal. One interface you have used for external. Now for DMG, you don't have interface. Then what you can do? You can do the virtualization of your interface where you can create a sub interfaces. You can create a sub interface while creating of the sub interface. It is just working as a physical interface. Okay. But you can, it is, it is providing, you know, logical connectivity to you. So what you can do on this interface, you can create a network like this. Let me just clean up this. This port of the switch, okay, you can convert as a trunk, trunk mode. which can carry multiple VLAN traffic, maybe VLAN 10, VLAN 10, you can create for internal on the switch and VLAN 20, you may create as a DMG. So on this VLAN 20, you can put the DMG server. So all the servers you can put over here on this particular interface you can create a sub interface like this ethernet 0 slash uh, 0 dot 10 that is one interface you can create this interface you can dedicate for internal internal zone and ethernet 0 slash uh, 0 dot 20 you can dedicate it for external zone okay so that would be the use of uh, you know sub interface now what would happen this interface which is ethernet 0 slash 0 this is a physical interface and under this physical interface you have two logical interface ethernet 0 slash 0 dot 10 and ethernet 0 slash 0 dot 20. so 0 slash 0 you have dedicated for internal zone And this you have dedicated for uh, external zone. So when you have a number of interfaces list on the firewall, you can achieve it via, you can achieve uh, all zone functionality via sub interfaces. You can create a sub interface where you can extend the interfaces. In production, how happens? In production, basically, we first create aggregate and then aggregate interface. We can create a sub interfaces in the production. I didn't get actually. So first, we are aggregating for the higher throughput, and yeah. then we are then we are sub interfacing that. Yes, right. So basically, that that is a standard practice if you are doing in the production. Let's say. Uh, I would take a simple example in the production. Okay. So in production, we are first creating, aggregating them. So let's say we have Ethernet 0 slash 0, Ethernet 0 slash 1, Ethernet 0 slash 2, and Ethernet 0 slash 4. I mean, in production, we have multiple interfaces, 0 slash 4, 5, like that, Ethernet 0 slash 5. So what we do for high, higher throughput, let's say I just want to achieve higher throughput. So for higher throughput, we just aggregate the interface. Let's say this is providing one GBPS. Sorry, gig we can say. So let's say this is providing one GBPS. Okay, so we are aggregating them. We are creating aggregated interface. Maybe AZ1 we have created. 
now this is providing uh, how much throughput this is providing 2 gbps this interface this ag1 can provide 2 gbps throughput now within this ag interface aggregated interface we can further go and we can create a sub interfaces okay so we have aggregated this and after aggregation we can create a sub interfaces so we have let's say we have created az1.1 for internal and az1.2 for external let's say okay and this is connected to the same switches where switch uh, i mean where vlan we are creating okay and this aggregate aggregated uh, interface is connected to the same switches now what will, would happen let's say any of the interface goes down this interface goes down whether we are going to lose any functionality no other interface is going to carry the traffic okay so that's why we do the aggregation in the production and further we cre create a sub interfaces okay if we aggregate all the interfaces what would happen i mean four interfaces so if two interface or three interface down still my traffic would be going through the uh, through the other interface right that that is the use of aggregated interface with sub interface creation so how many interfaces we use to do aggregation usually oh. i mean not sorry not all but uh, usually uh, we can say four to eight interfaces and the separated one are for maybe a j and for maybe mirroring or uh, you were telling about right i mean the the interface which which we not segregate because we, in the production we have usually high end model okay so in high end model we have ha port uh, dedicatedly available the the separate one we use to left for the future use okay in case of we need to increase the network uh, i mean extend the network so we can use whatever the left out interfaces would be there or maybe we, if we need to, um, you know, increase the number of ag aggregated interface, then we can use uh, those separated one, maybe in future. Okay. Yeah. In our lab, it, these are four, four we are uh, showing, right? Yeah, we have four, we can use them as aggregated interface. Okay, so that's the sub interface and aggregate interface. We have tunnel interface. So whenever you just want to create IPsec tunnel, for each IPsec tunnel, you have to define tunnel interface, okay? Tunnel interface. Tunnel interface is a logical interface. So when you have a tunnel interface in a Palo Alto firewall, that means if you are creating any IPsec tunnel, the, the firewall would be able to identify the traffic and before passing the traffic through the tunnel, it would try to encrypt at that. Okay, so any traffic which is passing through the tunnel get encrypted uh, as per whatever the VPN you are creating, IPsec or SSL VPN. So that is the use of tunnel interface. Tunnel interface, I would show you practically. And then loopback interface. If you want to check firewall itself, whether firewall is okay or not. So like similar, we have on every system, we have loopback interface. Same way we have loopback interface on the Palo Alto as well. And this is the loopback interface IP address 127.0.0.1. So four interface are the logical interface. Now I'm going to show you some configuration. Okay, so that I can show you this configuration, which is management interface. Okay, so let's go to lab over here. And let me just try to do the configuration of 
fall alto firewall so when you are receiving the first time fall alto firewall you have to do some configuration what is the configuration the management ip you need to configure it so so that you can access the firewall usually on physical firewall when you have physical firewall on physical firewall pre assigned ip address would be there for management there is a pre assigned ip address and pre assigned ip address is 192.168.1.1 that's a pre assigned ip address to the management interface okay but let's say we we don't have a physical firewall we having the virtual machine this is the virtual machine these are the virtual firewall so for that we have to configure the ip address so there is no ip address right now and we need to configure it so what the ip address we are going to configure to this management interface 10.0.0.1 for follow to one and for this one i would configure 10.0.0.2 and further i would try to access this firewall through the network so when you just want to access to the network through the network you must have the same range ip to any any kind of jump host or maybe um, maybe this workstation so on this workstation i'm just going to configure one ip so that i can access the firewall so this workstation has two interface so in one of the interface i'm just going to configure this ip 10.0.0.10 that is slash 24 and through which after configuring the management inter uh, interface ip i would try to access my firewall via this switch on this switch i would create one vlan vlan 10 this vlan would be management vlan so ethernet 0 slash 4 ethernet 1 slash 0 and ethernet 0 slash 1 this would be part of management vlan ethernet 0 slash 4 one ethernet 1 slash 0 and ethernet 0 slash 1 this would be would be part of management interface right so let's do that let's create uh, configure ip let's configure vlan on the switch and let's uh, configure ip here on the workstation okay so let's do that i would show you management console first so to configure the ip on the palo alto firewall you can do via console okay you can connect the console cable to the firewall and then you can access it in our case if i click on the firewall the console is going to be open okay so let's click on the firewall the console is opened over here and let's try to log in so if i want to log in i would log in via admin account password i would define admin old password was admin and new password I'm going to assign test at the rate one, two, three. Password has been changed. Now we need to change the IP address. So we need to go into the configure mode. And over here, we need to run this command set device config system type static because we just want to man define manual IP not via dscp and then set device config system ip dash address and the ip address i just want have decided 10.0.0.1 and net mask 255.255.255.0 .255 so we did this to make it effective we need to save the changes using commit command so once you commit it then this change is going to be part of running configuration and once it is 100 percent committed then whatever the changes we have done is effective let's exit from over here and we can run show interface management to check whether ip has been changed or not so you can see the ip has been changed over here okay same way i would do on the palo alto 2 okay 
So let's access it. Let's log in. Admin admin is a username password. Old password was admin. New password is test at the rate one, two, three. Test at the rate one, two, three. Admin and test at the rate one, two, three. I think it was in chains. Okay, now it has changed. So I would go to configure mode. I would run the command set device config system. Type is static. And set device config system. IP dash address. 10.0.0. .0 .0 to and net mask 255.255.255.0 commit the changes and exit from here. Now we have configured this, okay? And now we are going to configure the IP address on this workstation. So let's access it and configure the IP address. So we can go to uh, control panel, network and internet, I think and then network and sharing center and from here change adapter setting we can change the ip address so i would try to assign the ip address to this one Ten dot zero dot zero dot sorry Ten dot zero dot zero dot ten and the subnet mask 255.255.255.0 let me see, check the connectivity try to ping 10.0.0.1 i'm able to ping that means my traffic is going through the switch on the switch itself we need to do some configuration so let's go to go and access the switch and let's do the configuration as i told that we are going to create a vlan so go to conf t and create a vlan 10 give some name and move the interface ethernet 1 slash 0 ethernet 3 slash 1 and ethernet 4 slash 0 so interface range ethernet 1 slash 0 comma ethernet 3 slash 1 this is 3 slash 1 and ethernet 4 slash 0 switch port mode access and switch port access vlan 10 okay let's see Hmm. 
Yeah. So you can see that post configuring the VLAN, uh, I can communicate. So what I would do, I would show you by accessing the um, by access this firewall. Okay, right now my firewall is reachable. So I can access that firewall through browser using GUI. So let me just try to access firewall. So I'm trying to access first firewall. You need to access via HTTPS. Okay, so I put the HTTPS and the IP of my first firewall. That is 10.0.0.1. This is IP of my first firewall. Okay, first time it is going to give insecure connection because my uh, my browser does not understand a certificate of firewall. So we can proceed and we can type the username and password. Default username was admin and password was test at the rate one two three. We have changed the password. So let me just talk about dashboard of this firewall. Okay. So first screen we will get the dashboard of the firewall. Okay. So right now we have uh, Panorama. Uh, pa sorry, Palo Alto operating system nine point zero, and it's going to give you what all the feature it has. Okay. To this. Uh, pan OS. So now you, you can see the dashboard. This is a dashboard. Let me show you some important information in this dashboard. We have a device name. That's the name of device. You can change it. We have management IP. That is the IP address that we have defined. Then subnet mask. We haven't defined any default gateway. We haven't defined any IP version 6. But if you don't define IP version 6, by default on the firewall, IP version 6 is enabled. So it has taken link local address. This is the IP version 6 address it has taken by default. This is the management MAC address. That is, this is a MAC address of firewall. The model is a PAVM that this is a virtual machine. Virtual firewall. We have the serial number, but serial number is showing unknown. The reason is no activation if firewall is not activated then serial number would not be there then this is a cpu id this is a cpu basically so for cpu id it is showing kvm that this is hosted on any kind of hypervisor this is hosted on hypervisor and the hypervisor is a kvm type that is a KVM. So you know KVM is basically in the Linux machine. So this operating system, uh, sorry, this CPU is a, a kind of KVM type. That means this is a Linux. The base operating system of this machine is a Linux. Okay. And this is a unique UID. So this is a unique UID to identify this virtual machine. VM license, as I told, not activated. That's why it is showing none. A VM mode, this is on KVM mode. Okay, that means it is on virtualization mode. This is a software version. This is nothing but this is a pan OS version. This is pan OS. This is firewall operating system. Then global protect agent. We don't have any agent so far. No agent, that's why it is showing 0.0.0, .0 version. Then application version, basically on the firewall, we have the app version. This is for app ID. So this is app ID version. Then URL filtering version. We don't have any URL filtering license so far. Global protect client VPN. There is no session is connected. Sorry, there is no version client VPN. And this is the time that is showing currently. So this, this, this is the very informative information you can see on the dashboard to the journal information. Who has already logged in? You can see over here. So admin has logged in via two method using CLI. So you can see CLI is open over here. That's why 
it is showing as a CLI and the web. So web is open over here. That's why it is showing web. There are some system log as well. It is showing over here. Okay. So it, it would be showing some, you know, informational critical log over here. Okay. And then what are the config logs we have run? What is the config command we have run that is showing over here? Okay. So this is the dashboard. Then we have ACC that is application command center over here. You would be able to see top application, top user, etc. Right now we don't have any traffic. That's why it is showing. Okay. In earlier lecture, we decide, we also talk about that in firewall, we have dedicated CPU for management plane and dedicated CPU for data plane so that you can see over here under system resources. Okay, so here you can see the dedicated CPU and dedicated uh, CPU for uh, management plane and dedicated CPU for data plane. So if you want to see the CPU utilization of this firewall, so you can see via same dashboard. Okay, there is no session so far from this firewall. That's why it is showing session count zero maximum session. It can support one, two, four, eight. Okay, this is the monitor using monitor. You can monitor the traffic. So once your firewall is activated, you would be able to see traffic log, threat log, URL filtering log, wildfire subscription log, any kind of data filtering. Okay, but without activation, you would be able to system logs. So any kind of, um, you know, system critical kind of things you would be able to see. And also you can see that what all the session is going through the firewall using session browser. Okay. So right now we don't have any session. That's why we can't see anything, but once session is create, created, we would be able to see through session browser and traffic log as firewall is not activated. You won't be able to see that, but a system log you can see over here, all kind of system log you can see. And the filtering of log is very uh, simple. You just click on anywhere. For example, if you just want to see logs regarding the authentication, you just click over here authentication and it is showing that if subtype equal to authentication and you just press enter. So it is going to show you all the authentication log. If you want to remove your filter, you can click over here. Filter is going to be clear and then it is going to show you complete logs. Same way, if you want to see any kind of VPN logs, you can click here and you can click on this go button. You can see the VPN logs. So filtering is very simple. You can do all kinds of things like you just want to see VPN. And also you want to see, a, you know, a RAS log. So you can just put subtype equal to VPN and and so here we can you can see and or op or operator you can put manually as well like this. Okay. So you would be able to see those kind of logs. You can see. So very very simple filtering you can do the filtering based on any parameter based on type based on the severity based on the event or based on the object like you just want to see the management logs only so you can click on management and then you would be able to see management log only now the policy here you would be able to see firewall policy we have different type of policy right so we have security policy, which is related to firewall. We have net policy, which is related to netting. We have QoS policy, which is related to quality of services where you just want to prioritize some traffic. We have policy based forwarding. So if you want to configure PBR policy based routing, okay. So you can configure through policy based forwarding option. We have decryption policy. So any traffic you just want to decrypt, you can use this policy. We have tunnel inspection traffic. If you want to inspect the tunnel traffic, you can do this. You have application override. If you just want to create a custom app ID, so you can do via this. 
we have authentication policy where users want to have user authentication which is going through the firewall so you can use authentication and we have dos protection policy this is regarding the ddos protection okay so any kind of ddos rule if you want to create so you can create using ddos protection then we have the object tab using object tab you can create a different type of object so to create a rule what you required you required source ip destination ip how you can achieve that you can create the object different type of object so for source ip destination ip or source network or destination network you can create address type of object i'm taking one of the example over here for example i just want to define that management pc ip so i want to define that mgmt pc ip is what through which i am accessing this firewall the ip of management pc is 10.0.0.10 this is the ip address so i have taken the name management pc its uh, type is a ip net mask and we have taken like this so we can define that what we just want to do we can use fqdn as well we can use uh, ip net mask as well or we can use ip range as well using the object so let's create one of the object you can define the tag as well so using tag it would be simply simple to identify a type of uh, you can define any tagging so management pc is part of you know internal so i can say that this is internal object i have defined the tag so using tag if i just want to filter anything yes we can do the filtering over here i can put the tagging as an internal and i can filter this so one of the object i have created same way if you just want to create any other object for example let's say you just want to create an object for net minion so we can say net minion underscore domain and we can define that fqdn of the net minion we can say net minion dot net so that's a fqdn we have decided okay so these object later we can use into the policy in the firewall policy so we can define over here firewall policy and those object we can use over here okay so we have taken the object of address okay but we can create address group we can create a reason we can create application you can see these are the default application these are the app id okay you would have some app id for zoom as well let's see what is the app id of zoom if you don't know so you can put the name over here here and then it, it can do the filtering so zoom related app ids are here you can say this is the zoom app id under this zoom we have different services zoom based services zoom downloading zoom meeting zoom sharing to zoom uploading so let's say you just want to block uploading so what you can see zoom uploading service you can call and under policy you can define as a deny rule so this is the application id but if you want to create your custom you can click on add and you can create your custom as well okay this we will see the when we will see the practical of application override okay so applications you have and if you want to create a group of application let's say users want to allow multiple application for a particular user set okay so let's say users want to allow zoom and teams traffic for that you can create application group if you want okay we have service service is nothing but this is a port number we have two services http and https and for that you can see the port number if you want to define any custom port you can click on over here and you can define the custom port for example i'm going to define tcp 5600 this is a custom port so let's say my, my service for any server is running on 5600 so i can define the uh, custom port okay 
and here we can define the destination port IP as port number 5600 and after this we can click on OK so you can see custom ports has been created over here so you can create TCP type UDP pipe type or SCTCP type okay further we have you know um, security profile so you can see that your firewall can use as an antivirus for that you require this profile anti spyware it can use for that you can you require this profile vulnerability you can use as a vulnerability protection which is ips you can use any of these profile url filtering you can use any of these profile so using object you can do all these things then we have network tab this is really important most of the configuration i mean 70 percent of the configuration you are doing over here sorry 50 percent i can say 50 percent here 50 percent on policy so interfaces we have interfaces so let's take scenario over here we are going to do some kind of configuration so let's take an example for example i just want to define that my ethernet 0 slash 1 this should work as an internal interface and ethernet 0 slash 2 this should work as an external interface this should work as an external interface so for internal interface i would assign 192.168.2.1 ip and for external interface i am going to assign 100.0.0.1 ip and what I just want that any traffic which is hitting to internal interface, okay, going to external interface, that traffic should be allowed, okay. So we can decide that, let's say this is my internal PC. So one of the interface of this PC, Ethernet, uh, Ethernet E2, let's say I would decide that this is an internal PC, for that I would assign IP 192.168 dot 2 dot 10 slash 24 and this router i would use as an external router and this interface i would define ip 100 dot 0 dot 0 dot 10 so what i just want that when i try to ping from here if i try to ping from this pc to the external ip that traffic should be allowed through firewall ping from here to this ip 100.0.0.10 okay so that traffic should go to firewall first via let's say internal vlan on this switch we have internal vlan internal vlan so that would hitting the internal VLAN, then it is going to this interface and through the firewall, it is going to this interface and then hitting external VLAN. And then reaching to external router. So my traffic is going through this way going via this interface hitting to ethernet one slash one and then going via firewall to the external router so if we want to achieve this how we can do that let's see let me show you so i would access my firewall through the gui and i would define the ip address ethernet zero slash one i can say that this is let me just clear this this is an internal interface i can say comment as an internal interface okay what we required we required to change the interface type instead of tab we have to use what mode layer 3 mode because we just want to have ip address on the interface and then we can go and configure the config okay so as i told earlier that we have the virtual router each interface we have to put into the routing mode so for that we have decided that it should go to the default virtual router and then 
a security zone we have to create okay right now it's not created we can create from here or while you know defining the things on the interface we can create the security interface security zone so i'm clicking on zone i'm putting this zone name as a trust okay and i can click on okay and then i can define the ip address to this interface so ip address i have decided 192.168.2.1 it should be and let put the subnet mask this is the ip address we can click on ok and we can decide the ip address for ethernet 1 slash 2 as well let's configure this interface as a layer 3 it would be part of default virtual router and security zone i'm putting as a untrust which is external zone and we can click on ok and define the ip address 100.0.0.1 slash 24 okay so you can see interface ip has been defined okay this is not up right now but once i commit the configuration these interface is going to be up apart from that i would create a policy to allow the traffic from inside to outside by default you have a two traffic uh, two policies there one is the inter zone policy another is a intra zone policy so you can see over here right now we have two policy that's a default created intra zone policy intra zone policy is saying within the same zone same zone traffic should be allowed mean to say if you are sending the traffic from trust to trust zone So traffic is allowed okay inter zone traffic is saying this policy this is a default one this is showing between different zone different zone traffic is denied traffic is not allowed i can see so what is the meaning of this that means if you have trust zone and sending the traffic to untrust zone by default traffic is denied that is the use of these two policy this is these are the default you can't delete this you can't modify this okay so but what you can do on the top of it you can write the policy you can see this is the intra zone policy which is allowing the traffic between same zone and in between different zone traffic is by default denied so on the top of this policy what we can do we can create our own policy um, i i have click on this add option i would give the policy name so since i'm allowing the traffic allow from trust to untrust untrust what kind of traffic i just want to allow i just want to allow ping traffic that ping should be allowed so i have defined decided ping over here source i can say source zone is trust source ip is 192.168 2 dot 10 that is ip of my machine which machine this one this machine ip is 2 dot 10 okay user we don't have anything right now destination i'm going to decide that untrust destination ip is 100.0.0.10 
which is this router application i can choose over here i just want to allow ping so i have chosen ping application services not, not required action it should be allowed and it should be logged as well let's click on ok so we have created a policy over here which is allowing the traffic this entire thing would only reflect if you commit these so we need to commit the changes then only these whatever we have done is going to replicate it on the firewall okay so commit has done let's click on close and now we can initiate the traffic but to initiate the traffic we must have the ip assigned over here so let's assign the IP to this workstation. We can go control panel again. Network and internet. Network and sharing center. Change adapter setting. This interface we are using as a management. So I would define this is MGMT interface. I have renamed and this interface I would use as an internal. So I would assign IP to this interface 192.168.2.10 subnet mask and then default gateway. Default gateway would be my firewall internal interface IP 2.1. I can say this is the what happened? Okay, so I can say this is the internal interface. Okay, so on the workstation, we have defined the IP. We have to define IP on this router as well. So let's open the router R1 and Ethernet on 0 slash 0. I would assign the IP. No. Go to enable mode, conf t and int space e0 slash 0. Let's assign IP over here, IP address 100.0.0.10 and subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. No shut to this interface, exit from here and define ip route as well and my route would be default route of this router would be my firewall which is 100.0.0.1 let's save the changes do wr okay and from workstation we can initiate the traffic the traffic must be going through the firewall so let's go to command from Try to ping external router 100.0.0.10 T, and you can see the traffic is going through the firewall. You want to see the log whether that, that is going through the firewall or not. So as I told, we can use monitor option and here we can go to session browser and we can see the, the session which is passing through the firewall. You can see the session is basically passing through by which rule? by the rule number first rule number allow trust to and trust ping that is the rule number if i click over here i should be able to go to the policy i mean this is this is showing as a filter but i can click on policy and you can see this is the traffic uh, this is the policy which is allowed that allowing that traffic you can see over here if you open this so you can see this is the session id and you can see that which rule is basically allowing this traffic.
So you can see that this rule is basically allowing the traffic. And this is a client to server. That means this is a source to destination, source to destination. This is outbound traffic. And this is a destination to source that is server to client that is inbound traffic, the return traffic, destination to source. This is a return traffic. So you have two flow from inside to outside. And here you have another flow from outside to inside. This is a return traffic. So both are being allowed basically. And state is basically active to this. You can see over here. What kind of application is being allowed? It's allowed ping application. What is the VCC is being used? First VCC, VCC one. There is only one virtual system in this firewall. So you can see the information over here. Any question? If you want to export this, you can export using PDF or CSV. Whatever the logs you have, session logs, you can export that. Okay, so in this practical, we have seen that uh, how to configure layer three interface and post configuring the layer to three interface, you can configure the IP address, etc. You can create a zone. Okay. And then you can create a policy to allow the traffic. And then you can initiate the traffic to test that whether traffic is allowed or not.